What's up everybody? It's me, Bryson Booker, and it's time for another cartoon movie review for you and you and you and you and you and you and those big robots that you have in your closet that you made when you were a little kid. Okay, you guys know what you guys know what I'm talking about. Come on, we, we all wanted a robot, right? You know? And so there's probably a robot or two, or at least some plans or blueprints for a robot in crayon that you probably drew when you were a kid, okay? Uh, it's for all of you guys. And those people that just like regular 1950 science fiction films. It's for you too, you science fiction nerds. And so, hey, it's me, Bryson Booker, and it's time for another review. And today, I'm going to be reviewing The Iron Giant Released by Warner Brothers Pictures in 1999, August 3rd, 1999 to be exact. Well, actually to be exact, exact, the film was originally released July 31st, uh, or July, I believe July 3rd or July 31st, 1999 in Los Angeles. But the film made its uh, worldwide debut on August 3rd, 1999. Basically, a film about a boy and a robot. <laughs> it's just, it's just... A robot from outer space, set uh, basically set in the 1950s. Uh, but there, there's actually more to the story I'll get into in a moment. But uh, yeah, the Iron Giant. These are this is one of those movies that I've known about since I was a little kid, but never actually sat down and watched it. I mean, it, it's been in my DNA for years, guys, but I, I've never actually seen it. Call me an idiot, call me lame, call me, you know, I'm not, I'm not a true 90s kid because I didn't see the Iron Giant. I'm, I, I don't care. But, you know, the first time I actually sat down and watched the Iron Giant was this past Saturday. And I'm just going to give you a short summary of basically what the movie is about and my opinions on it. All right, here we go. So, a boy named Hogarth. <laughs> interesting name for a boy, isn't it? Hogarth. Sounds like a Harry Potter character from the city of Hogwarts. Uh, but anyway, Hogarth um, is a boy in the 1950s. Uh, you know, mischievous boy. You know, those stereotypical 1950s boys that were obviously too cool for the culture. You know, those guys. Uh, he is basically living his life and wants something better from life. And so he's into this science fiction-y stuff. You know, things happening, owning different things. Things like that. So, eventually, after the government launches Spotnik, which was basically uh, some government plotted thing. I think it was like a Spotnik, Spot, or Sputnik, Sputnik or Spotnik. It was some sort of spaceship or something that the U.S. launched out. Uh, so that that was an actual event. Spotnik was real. Uh, so this movie, again, takes place in the late 1950s after the launch of that uh, rocket or satellite. I think it was a satellite. Spotnik was a satellite. But anyway, this movie takes place then. Um, and so after, soon after they launch that, uh, a robot is soon discovered. A big iron giant. Literally. <laughs> this is this, um, the, a big iron giant is spotted. Um, and Hogarth eventually meets the iron giant. And the iron giant and... Hogarth become good friends, um, but the only problem is, you know, the robot is still kind of thinking about what it used to do. You know, it used to be a war machine. It used to be something and someone that it really didn't want to be. And so, all while this is going on, the government fi finds out about this Iron Giant, and basically, the U.S. hires somebody, a fictional character in the film, to take down the robot and basically to destroy it. Basically, to save the country, you know. So, the robot itself is trying to protect the country, but <laughs> the government is like, no, kill him, get him out of here, we don't want him. And so, basically, the U.S. hires somebody out to destroy the robot and basically to follow Hogarth and to see uh, if he'll lure him to the Iron Giant so he can destroy him. Okay, so basically, Hogarth has to rescue the Iron Giant, you know, and protect him. But the Iron Giant eventually ends up saving the world from a deadly meteor or a deadly comet or something that wants to try to destroy everybody. So in the end, the Iron Giant is a big hero. Spoiler alert, sorry. But, I mean, come on, it's obvious in kids' movies, right? You know, it's really obvious. But anyway, uh, the Iron Giant saves the day. 
all because he had faith in Hogarth and had faith in himself because he knew what he wanted to be and he wanted to be that hero that wanted to save everyone. And so, you know, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much the whole story. Very simple story, guys. Actually, um, and I better mention this before some of you guys sue me, uh, but The Iron Giant is based on an actual book. Um, I forget who it's by, but it's based on a book called The Iron Man, I believe, um, that was made in the 60s. Basically, uh, the story is very similar to the original. However, the director, Brad Bird, added some things, you know, kind of to spice it up a little bit. But he didn't, you know, want to add too much, but he, he did add some things, some characters, other characters, to kind of spice up the story a bit. But yes, this film is based on a book. Haven't read the book, don't know about the book. Can probably go get it at Barnes and Nobles if you're interested in reading. Which is a good thing, but I'm not. So, <laughs> I like to watch the movies. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's based on a book. Very simple story to follow, honestly. Um, you know, it, it's pretty well executed. Some of the voice actors um, in this film, they actually got a pretty good amount of voice actors. Uh, Jennifer Aniston, Harry Connick Jr., who actually plays the beatnik that Hogarth uh, be befriends in this film. So Harry Connick Jr., the singer, who now has his own his own daytime talk show, is in this film. Uh, Vin Diesel, who plays the Iron Giant, he's in this uh, movie. Uh, known from the Matrix films, obviously. Enough said. Okay, uh, James Cameron, James, no, not James Cameron, James Gammon, Cloris Lemick, Christopher McDonald, John Mahui, Eli Materna, and all of these other names that I can't really mention. But the main names that I mentioned, they are very familiar names to you all. I know you guys know and love those actors. They play in this film. Uh, but the main thing that I just love about this film is... Wait for it. The animation. Guys. And, and, and one of, the thing about this film is Warner Brothers was kind of skeptical. They were like, um, should we do another animated movie? Because the film that came before this in 1998 uh, was The Quest for Camelot, which I actually reviewed. Uh, so I'll put that link down in the description so you can check that review out if you would like. That was their previous major animated film before the Iron Giant. And it was a major disaster. <laughs> Enough said. Uh, the Quest for Camelot didn't do what Warner Brothers wanted it to do. In fact, you know, they wanted to try to beat Disney's butt, but obviously Disney is Disney. No one can beat them. They are going to take over the world in the next couple of years. I'm telling you guys, Disney is going to take over the world as well as Google. And Google may pay me just for saying that. Uh, but anyway, they're both going to take over the world. And so Warner Brothers was trying to get their thunder back by releasing a premium animated movie called The Quest of Camelot. Well, it didn't do what they wanted to do. So they were really skeptical about the Iron Giant. But when, uh, you know, they finally put Brad Bird, the director of this film, on The Iron Giant, they were like, okay, Bird, you listen here. You better make this film really, really good. And Warner Brothers, again, they were still, Warner Brothers were still scaredy cats because they really didn't advertise the film that well. The marketing for this film was stupid. It, it, it didn't even make sense. They barely advertised for it. But, obviously, it ended up being an animated classic. And for good reason, too. You know, the story is top-notch. The voice acting is great. The voice directing is great. The animation is just superb. A blend of traditional and computer-generated elements uh, that basically create a wonderful 1950s style uh, work of art um, that, the, again, you know, it can't, it can't touch, you know, the animation on this really can't touch today's stuff. Today's stuff just can't touch it. It can't touch this film. You know, it, it's great animation, smooth animation. I love it. I just love the colors they used. You know, I, I love the design of the Iron Giant, how he has some CGI elements, and it's not fully CGI, guys. They use CGI to aid them in the process. And it, it, just, it just makes for an overall good-looking film. You know, that has a story that's relatable. It has a story that's fun. It has a story that'll make you think, you know, what were you put on this earth to do? Not just to be lazy and sit 
on your butt watching my videos all day. Even though I appreciate that, please don't do it all day every day. Go out and do something. Please, please, please get a life, people. And that's what this movie reminds us to do. Get a life. You know, know what you were designed to do. Uh, and so that's what the Iron Giant himself had to realize. And what Hogarth himself had to realize, too. You know, that we're all designed for a purpose. We just have to know what it is. And so I believe that movie does a very simple yet effective job of telling that simple message. But not bashing it through your head. You know, like some films do. Which they will not be named here. Uh, it's a great movie. I love it. I enjoy it. And you guys will love it. You guys will enjoy it. From 1999, it's The Iron Giant. Catch it on a Netflix or some other location or even on video. You know, it's, it's a great film. I love it. Check it out.